If you have studied Spanish for any amount of time, you probably noticed that ir seems to appear everywhere with any form and uses. In this video, I'm going to teach you nine key uses, but not always obvious uses of ir, so you can sound more natural when you speak Spanish. I'm also going to give you a quiz so you can put these nine uses into practice. Hi everyone, this is Daniela Sanchez from Tell Me in Spanish, y estoy aquí para ayudarte a hablar español de forma más natural. When people learn Spanish, they want to sound as natural as possible. And the key is not learning new words, but learning how to use the words that you already know. Taking it as an example. In Spanish, we can use ir to talk about destination or direction. It's not about the journey, it's actually about the destination. So to build this meaning, you are going to use ir plus a plus a noun that refers to the place that you're going. For example, Alejandra fue a Madrid. Alejandra went to Madrid. Yo iré al dentista. I'll go to the dentist. Check two things here. You can conjugate ir to any tense you need, like I did in past and in future, and you can also use proper nouns, cities, states, countries, or common places. If you use those though, you're going to have to use Spanish contractions. I'm going to leave you a video on the descriptions so you know how to use these contractions in Spanish. Another common use of ir that you might want to learn is to use it to talk about future actions. Don't you hate learning new tenses with new endings, new regular verbs? Well, let me tell you a little secret. In Spanish, we actually use ir a little bit more, well, more than a little bit more, to talk about the future. Let me show you how we do this. You're going to conjugate ir in the present tense, plus a, plus an infinitive verb. For example, mañana vamos a ir al cine. Tomorrow, we're going to the, to the movies. Or, el mes que viene, voy a ir a París. Next month, I'm going to go to Paris. There is a fine print here though. We use this eight out of 10 times, but there are a few cases where you cannot use this tense. I'm going to leave you a video in the description so you learn when and how to use the near future tense in Spanish. The next use is one of my favorites. Don't judge me, you're going to find it very useful too. It's great to give excuses, well, to explain people why you couldn't do something. In this case, you're going to use ir to talk about past intentions, things that you meant to do, but for some reason or another, you couldn't do. To do it, you're going to conjugate ir to the imperfect tense. You're going to use this structure so you can explain what happened. Let me give you an example. Te iba a llamar, pero ya era tarde. I was going to call you, but it was late. It has nothing to do with the fact that I just found a new Netflix show. I wouldn't do that to you. Or, íbamos a ir, pero no teníamos dinero. We were going to go, but we didn't have money. The fourth use is also very useful in Spanish. You're going to use ir to emphasize, and pay attention to this one, to emphasize that you're leaving a place. To do this, you're going to use reflexive pronouns. For example, nos vamos a las 10. Don't be late, we're leaving at 10. Number two, ya te vas, es muy temprano. Are you leaving? It's too early, the party is just starting. Actually, I didn't come to the party. I found Netflix, if you remember. In this case, you can add additional information, such as the place that you're leaving, so you can go to that place, or the time that you're leaving, okay? Another common use of ir is to talk about the means of transportation you're using. To do this, you're going to use the preposition en plus a noun. For example, vamos en carro, o ya voy en el camión, I'm on the bus. However, as usual, there is an exception. If you're walking, you say, ir a pie, I'm going by foot. Another common example of ir, and this is very common when we're speaking, is to say that you're picking something up. So this something 
can be things, but it can also be people. For example, voy por la pizza. I'm going for the pizza. You haven't gone for the pizza. I'm starving. Why are you waiting? Or mi mamá fue por los niños. My mom went to pick up the kids. Check that you can conjugate ir in any tense that you need. I love recommending books, TV shows, and movies. However, I hate spoiling things to people. So in order for me to know that it's safe to talk about something, I use the, ver the verb ir, well, we all use it in Spanish. We use it to ask where people at. For example, vamos en el capítulo 3. I'm on chapter 3, don't tell me more. You can also replace en for donde to provide a more detailed description of where you at in a book or TV show. For example, vamos donde Jon Snow, we are where Jon Snow came back from the dead, almighty and gorgeous. I know, that was great. So use this application so you don't spoil things to people. Another use of, of ear is to use it as a synonym of usar or to wear. And you're only going to use this meaning when you're talking about clothes or colors. For example, te veo ahí, voy de pantalón negro y blusa roja. I'll see you there, I'm wearing black jeans and a red t-shirt. And finally, you can also use ir to talk about the potential profession of a person, or in other words, what you think a person is going to become. Mis hijos van para abogados. My children are going to become lawyers. That's what my mom used to say, and look how things turn out. Number two, Julia va para doctora. Julia is going to become a doctor. In some cases, like in my mom's case, you're just making hypotheses about what the people is going to become. In other cases though, we do know that that person is studying or is already working as a doctor, so they are going to become that profession. Like I told you, it has so many wonderful and powerful applications, so make sure you start using them in your conversations. So now I'm going to give you a quiz so you can put this knowledge into practice. Your job is very simple. You just have to complete the sentence with the structures that you just learned. But don't be a cheater. It doesn't mean that you're just going to write ir. You actually have to use the structures, infinitive verbs, prepositions, or pronouns that you need for that specific application. Let's start. Number one, el mes que viene blank a México. Number two, Juan, blank, supermercado. Number three, Sofía, blank, de negro. Four, no lo he visto, blank, el capítulo dos. Number five, yo, blank, los niños. Number six, a él le gustan los animales. Seguro, blank, veterinario. Number seven, Sofía, blank, a las 10, 8, voy a llegar tarde porque, blank, pie. 9, yo, blank, la tarea, pero me quedé dormida. Leave me your answers in the comments and I'll help you correct them if you need to. So before we finish this video, I want to give you some additional resources so you can practice this topic a little bit more. The first one is a video on this same lesson, just in Spanish. That way you get to practice your Spanish comprehension. And the second one is a conjugation guide to the verb ir. Let's face it, this is about ir, so you better know how to conjugate this verb in different tenses. That's it for today, guys. I hope you liked the video, and if you did, please hit the like button, and I hope to see you soon. Bye!